This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Governor Evers is calling for a special meeting of the legislature's Joint Finance Committee next week to release $125 million to clean up PFAS pollution in Wisconsin. Evers' plan would let the Department of Natural Resources decide how to spend the money instead of a framework created by lawmakers the governor vetoed yesterday. Wisconsin hasn't had a Department of Natural Resources secretary since Adam Payne stepped down in October. Governor Evers tells the Journal Sentinel he wants to make sure he makes the right choice. Also in October, the state Senate fired more than half the Natural Resources Board, which sets the agency's policies. Silver alerts will now be issued when children go missing but don't qualify for any other kind of alert. The Prince Act is named after Prince McCree, who went missing in Milwaukee last fall and was found dead the next day. His family had asked for an amber alert, but his case didn't meet the criteria. Communities around Wisconsin have more than doubled their property tax revaluation since 2020. Forward Analytics says local governments want to make sure property owners aren't underpaying their share in taxes if the market value on their homes is soaring while their assessed value stays flat. Enbridge Energy's controversial Line 5 will likely come up when the Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues meets in New York next week. The Bad River Band of Lake Superior Chippewa says Line 5 is still a threat to their land. The Bad River Band is already at a risk of an oil spill because the pipeline is going directly through their reservation and the reroute. I mean, if you look at the map, it's basically hugging the reservation boundaries. Stephanie Sosi is a lawyer for Earth Justice. Line 5 carries up to 23 million gallons of oil and natural gas every day. New worker safety regulations may have unintended consequences. The federal government now requires long-haul truckers to log their hours on wireless devices. But that could expose millions of trucks to hackers. Those systems that never used to be connected to the Internet or have any like wireless connections, they are becoming more and more connected, and that can introduce vulnerabilities. Jake Jepson is the co-author of a study that shows how hackers can manipulate trucks remotely. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is reminding the public to be aware that black bears are beginning to emerge from hibernation. As the bears wake up from their winter naps, they'll be searching for food and new territory to occupy, which could draw them closer to the public than most residents would like. Northern Wisconsin residents especially should take preventive steps to keep bears away, like taking down bird feeders, reducing the smell from trash cans, and limiting how long their pets are left outside. Area fire crews responded to another blaze in Lake Haley this week. According to the Chippewa Fire District, crews responded to a fire at a business in Lake Haley on Tuesday morning. The fire reportedly occurred at A to B Mobile Repair on 49th Avenue at around 10.30 a.m. When crews arrived, they found the fire coming from the ceiling of the business and were able to extinguish it in short order. Nobody was reported injured as a result of the fire, and fire officials are still investigating what caused it to start. The woman accused of driving through a holiday display at Irvine Park in Chippewa Falls had a competency hearing this week. Ebony Hudson was arrested in December for the outburst, which caused damage to the display and a city parks truck, which she rammed into multiple times. Hudson claimed she was competent in Chippewa County Court on Tuesday. Despite her claim, the judge presiding over the case issued a subpoena for the doctor who conducted her competency exam, and a new hearing will be scheduled. The Altoona Police Department is asking for help from the public in finding a woman who has been missing for weeks. Officials say Marguerite Endres has been missing since February 1st, and some of her personal belongings had been found near the Chippewa River. Authorities say the 56-year-old woman was homeless, but sometimes stayed at a house in Altoona and frequented the downtown Eau Claire area. She also sometimes goes by the name Marguerite Sikowski. Anybody with information should contact the Altoona Police Department. The Chippewa Valley Regional Airport will receive federal funding to construct a new 5,000-square-foot hangar. According to a press release from Senator Tammy Baldwin, over $2.6 million in federal funding has been allocated to rural airports in Wisconsin, with the majority of that funding going to the Chippewa Valley. The airport will receive just over $2 million to construct a two-bay South General Aviation apron hangar for storage, maintenance, and service, which officials hope will also generate revenue. 
A Chippewa Falls man has been charged with 15 counts of possessing child pornography. According to the criminal complaint, 61-year-old David Hendricks was charged in relation to an investigation that began in 2019 when an Altoona detective uncovered a number of child pornography files being sent to the same user through a computer program. Authorities executed a search warrant at Hendricks' home in July of 2019 and allegedly found three hard drives containing the illicit material. Hendricks will appear in court on June 4th. Chippewa County Sheriff Travis Hakes has responded to the statement released by the Deputy Sheriff's Association. The deputy statement said the investigation into Sheriff Hakes has been a distraction and embarrassing, and they can't condone his actions. Sheriff Hakes responded Monday afternoon, saying he respects the First Amendment rights of the deputies as he has tried to create a culture of transparency in the department. He also says he looks forward to putting the past behind them and working to meet the needs of the county. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers announced the signing of the Prince Act on Tuesday. The bill aims to address gaps in the state's Amber Alert system to give law enforcement officers more resources in a quicker fashion to find missing children. In a press release, Governor Evers mentioned both Prince McCree, the Milwaukee boy who the bill is named after, and Lily Peters, a Chippewa Falls girl who was killed in 2022. In both cases, law enforcement authorities told the families that they didn't meet the criteria for an Amber Alert. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers get a win in Cincinnati. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers battle to a 9-5 victory over the Reds. Another new face in the crew lineup, 23-year-old Blake Perkins, got the start in center field and drove in three runs. Brewers manager Pat Murphy. You know, like, this kid loves baseball. His personality is so calm and cool, collected, and he watches the game as good as anyone. NBA, the Bucks with a much-needed win, 104-91 over the Boston Celtics. Giannis Antetokounmpo had to under go an MRI after limping off the court in the third quarter with pain in his left calf muscle. As for the game, there was only two shots from the free throw line, a new NBA record. Doc Rivers. Man, 157 game time. My goodness. You can go to a game and still have dinner. NFL, the Packers tailgate tour continues its drive around the state. Some of the nonprofits are doors about to close, and the Green Bay Packer Foundation helps them. That's Packers Hall of Famer Leroy Butler. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. If you missed the 26th annual Wisconsin Film Festival in Madison, take a short drive east this weekend and check out the impressive 16th annual Milwaukee Film Festival, which kicks off April 11th and runs for two weeks until April 25th. Milwaukee Film offers an impressive list of international and domestic films. More information is available at mkefilm.org. As popular as Game of Thrones was, there's only been one spinoff, House of the Dragon, that's made it to the screen. For the time being, that will continue to be the case as the Jon Snow spinoff has been shelved, according to Yahoo News. The show was pitched by Kit Harington, who portrayed Snow, but it's been reported that HBO has tabled it for the time being. Harrington said they threw ideas around, but nothing really resonated, adding that he doesn't want to be part of a so-so product on screen. Apparently, Harrington learned his lesson when he was in Pompeii, which received 27% on Rotten Tomatoes. Curb Your Enthusiasm's final episode was last Sunday. Susie Essman, who plays foul-mouthed Susie Green on the show, says fans are visibly upset when they approach her on the street and she is kind and gracious to them, adding that she thinks fans want her to tell them to go bleep themselves and keep walking. Essman says that is not how she is at all in real life, and that's why it's called acting. I'm sure she is lovely in real life, but her character will be missed. Sylvester Stallone has been accused of creating a toxic environment on the set of Tulsa King. Stallone is the lead actor of the Taylor Sheridan executive-produced show, which is currently filming its second season in Atlanta. Stallone was overheard saying to the director that the background actors were ugly and that he wanted to be surrounded by young, pretty girls. Is anyone surprised? Folks, if you take steroids for decades, it's bound to affect your ability to speak intelligently, especially if you were incapable of doing so beforehand. Jon Stewart poked fun at Fox News for tying Monday's eclipse to the immigration issue. Deadline.com reports that Fox News anchors warned their viewers about the dangers the eclipse posed to the border, saying that the cartels and smugglers would use the four-minute temporary shade to enter the country. Stewart responded, saying, or they could wait till nighttime. Stewart continued lampooning Fox by saying this year's cicada infestation could provide perfect cover for border crossers. Monday nights on Comedy Central sure are fun. Does anybody really pay attention to what a host wears during a major award show? Well, the fashion police do, and they were out in force following the Country Music Awards last weekend. People.com reports that singer Kelsey Ballerini changed her outfit nine times while hosting the Country Music Awards. That is impressive, folks. Just reading this Hollywood update, I've only changed clothes once. 
For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Partly cloudy and warmer today. We'll get to the upper 60s for a high this afternoon. The wind out of the southwest at 5 to 15. A few sprinkles tonight will drop to 43 for a low tomorrow. Mostly cloudy, becoming breezy with scattered showers at a high tomorrow of only 58. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temperature 44. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.